uh, the divine seed. The title is the divine seed. And just to see, just to look into, further into uh, the sacrifice that Jesus has done. Praise the Lord. I hope you can all hear me clearly. It looks like I'm echoing a bit. Turn down the mid gain and give me some proper volume. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I, I'm, I'm a worshiper. I mean, I, if, if, if you leave me alone, I'd rather just worship rather than preach. Amen. That's, that's my, my thing. Um, but thank God for the teaching of the word. The Bible says we do not call ourselves. God called us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. When I was 15 and a half years old, um, uh, the, Lord, the, Lord, the Lord found me. I don't want to say I found Jesus. The Lord found me because some of you think that, you know, you are the one that found Jesus. You know, the Lord found you. <laughs> you are the one that was lost. <laughs> so, anyway, I found the Lord. The Lord found me 15 and a half years old. And that's um, nearly, nearly 35 years now of worshiping the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's been an incredible journey. But every day with Jesus is a different experience. Amen. The divine seed. Let's jump straight into it. Text John chapter 12. Turn with me to John chapter 12. Hallelujah. John chapter 12, from verse 20 down to 26. Those of us who may be watching online, um, thank you for joining us. We are broadcasting live from sunny Manchester. You know, I, keep on say, I kept on saying that in the winter. It's actually sunny today. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yesterday was the warmest day of the year at 18 degrees. I, was gonna, I sent a message to some of my friends in Africa that, oh, it's a warm day today. They were like, what's the temperature? 18 degrees. We're like, it's less than room temperature. What are you talking about? <laughs> John chapter 12, verse 20. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. And they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verse 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves him, serves me, him, my father, will honor. I'm trying to contain myself so I don't preach two or three week sermon in one day. Because this passage of scripture ministers to me in, at so many different levels. Look at verse 24. Except, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. There's something about when we die to ourselves. There's something about when we stop living just for me, myself, and I that opens up a channel of blessing and increase. But that's what we're going to be studying today. Hallelujah. I want to start by introducing us or reminding us of the seed principle. Amen. The seed principle. And so let's jump to Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. I like to keep things organized. We'll talk about the seed principle. We'll unpack our text. And if there's time, we'll talk about the power of the seed. The power of the seed. You know, especially in our line of work, for me as a preacher, <laughs> and even in my work in the medical field, Sometimes you're not always sure that what you're doing is making an impact. You know, you, you, you save lives, you do every, everything you can, and you're not always sure that, am I really making a difference? 
Recently, I had a family, a young lady came, young, recently married, and she said, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I see 40 people a day, 40 patients a day. And she said, you made this diagnosis, you made this diagnosis, and you helped me in this way. And she nearly brought tears to my eyes because she said, you changed my life. Hallelujah. That's in my secular, regular job. God can use us everywhere we are. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, sorry, verse 11 to 12. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. He also said that this is, sorry, go to, if you jump to Mark chapter 4, verse 26. I want to get the scriptures out of the way um, because, so that we can jump right into it. Mark chapter 4, 26 to 29. We read Genesis 1, 11 to 12. I use the New King James. Not because it's the most holy one. It's just because I like it. So don't make a doctrine out of that. <laughs> Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Personally, I'm tired of the D and thou in King James Version. He also said that this is what the kingdom of God is like. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. A man scatters seed upon the ground. Night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he does not know how, all by itself the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. If you read the opening statement in Mark chapter 4, verse 26, the Bible says that this is what the kingdom of God is like. Let me take a step back because over the last few weeks, we've been talking about the fact that God is a God of patterns. God is a God of patterns. You see, some people have come to me and said, I find it difficult to understand God. And this is where Paul's prayer becomes very important in Ephesians chapter 1, verse, you know, verse 15 and 16. Thereabout, He says, I pray that the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding should be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Is somebody hearing me? This is not, um, um, this is not a medical book. This is not a historical book. This is not a James Hadley Chase book. Um, um, novel. This is not um, Jeffrey, what's his name? Whatever. Jeffrey Archer. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, thank you, man, the Holy Spirit breathes this. And so for us to be able to understand Scripture, we need to understand that we need to go back to the original source to help us to unpack Scripture. This is why a lot of people misinterpret, deface, malhandle the word of God. God is a God of pattern and a God of principle. He says, this is how the kingdom of God is like. In other words, you and I cannot change this principle. This is what the kingdom of God is like. God is not going to change the way he does things. The same yesterday, today, forevermore. I get tired of people trying to tell us that this is a modern world and so, you know, a man should marry a man and all of that. And yeah, I, I don't get it. I know it's Sunday morning, but you know, I, I get irritated personally. This is just me. I don't know about anybody else, but this is just me. We cannot, the Bible says we cannot do anything against the truth. If you want to argue, or like the saying meaning where I'm from, if you want to argue, if you want to argue, <laughs> go and argue with the Bible. I don't hate nobody. I love everybody. God loves everybody. But the word of God is the word of God. You cannot take the principles or the games. I, I used to play basketball. You cannot take the principles that govern basketball and take it into football and then expect it to work. It will not work. 
And so many of us try to operate scriptures based on our own experience, based on our own understanding, and then we turn around and say it's not working. The Bible says that this is how the kingdom of God works. God is a God of principles. He created seed time. He created harvest. As a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 8, it says, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time will never cease. So we need to understand that if you and I are going to understand God properly, then we need to understand the principles that govern the word of God. Can I get an amen, somebody? So I want to try to explain to us the seed principle. What does it mean? Because God does not change his mind about things. There are certain things, you can change the method, but his mind is from the beginnings. Just like (laughs) from the beginning of time, he says, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That will not change. Whether you are in Honolulu, Hawaii, whether you are in Indonesia, Jakarta, whether you are in Uganda, that does not change. If somebody hearing me says, oh, you don't understand. We are from Congo. We don't have money. Excuse me. Somebody lying. It's either your lying or the word of God is lying. Because the Bible says that as, <laughs> can I preach this morning? The Bible says that when we, if you, if you worship the Lord, he will bless your bread and your water. He didn't say if you are only in Hawaii, he will bless your bread and water. He didn't say it's only if you are in Manchester, he will bless your bread and water. The same principle operates everywhere in the world as long as you obey the principle. That's why as a young lad, I knew I didn't have to relocate from Africa in order to prosper. That's not why we relocated. Is somebody hearing me? Whether you are in Africa, you are in Asia, you are in Indonesia, you are in Fiji Islands. The word of God remains the same as long as we operate the principle of the word. Let me give you a good principle. The Bible says, for example, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall God cause men to give unto your bosom. Right? Many people want to receive. We claim it. I claim Sister Ria's necklace. I claim so-so and so shoe. I claim, claim, claim. How many times have you ever sold in your life? As a matter of fact, when, you know when we hear seed, we think money. The, the, in, in Christian circles, we have bastardized this word so much. You hear seed and you think money. Let me start by saying that seed goes beyond money. Seed is anything in your hand that you can plant. You can sow. You can sow your time. You can sow kindness. You can sow your service. That's a seed. This principle of God sowing his, of, of uh, the seed principle. You see, every time God wants to lift me up or take me to a different level, he will always show me with a seed. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to the intro. I said God was the one who instituted the the seed principle, according to Genesis chapter 1. Every living thing has the inbuilt capacity to reproduce itself. We don't need, you don't need anything else. You don't need a scientist. You don't need, as long as the weather and everything is good. Every living thing, check it. Every living thing has the capacity to reproduce itself. So the ability to reproduce is already on your inside. Oh, I wish somebody would catch this. There are some people who may be watching from parts of Africa and Asia thinking that it's because of your location. No. It's because you have not understood the principle. Hallelujah. Because every good and perfect gift does not come from abroad. It comes from above. I can't remember who it was, Smith Wigglesworth. He said, drop me in the Sahara Desert. Just leave me with my Bible. It will become an oasis. Hallelujah. (laughs) Why? Because the word of God does not change. It will not change. I got to move on. 
God is a God of, God of patterns, of principles, of laws. Failure to understand and discern these principles often leads to disappointment, disillusionment, and hurt. Some people say, I had a brother, a friend, a colleague rather. Yeah, he's a fro- he's all of these things actually. Um, who said, I tried that your Christianity. I tried your Christianity. <laughs> and it didn't work for me. I said, no. I said, no, brother. The word of God tried you and you failed. He said, oh, I tried the principles of the word of God. I tried to use it. You see, that's the word. I tried to use it. You want to use God. You think God is a native doctor. When you have a need, you run to God. (laughs) You run kitty kitty, run kata kata, run to God. Say, God, I have a need. When there is no longer a need, nobody sees you again. So you want to use God. Say, I'm using God. It's like, you know, like you're using God to, to get what you need. You are not going to get anywhere. This thing is about a relationship. Praise the Lord, somebody. Everything that is alive operates under the seed principle. Whether it's a child, whether it's your finances, whether it's your business, or whether it's a church. It operates on a seed principle. God will not go outside of the confines of his principles. There are certain things you cannot rush. You know, I, I remember speaking to some young people. Um, I do, we do a lot of youth mentoring as part of our ministry. And, um, <laughs> and you know, we're talking about, you know, sexuality, male and female, etc. And we're trying to explain to them that no matter how in a hurry you are as a teenager to get to where God wants you to get to. Everything has a process. It's a process. An animal gets pregnant, is it an elephant, for 20 months, that baby is going to be there until it's ready to come out. If you rush that baby out, you will not get a proper elephant. The same thing with humans. If, you know, you, you have a child at three months, that child cannot survive. It's not sustainable to life. So that process needs to be followed. Whatever we are sowing today <laughs> is we will eventually reap. Let me, can I put it to you that where you are now, some of, some of you are not going to like this. Don't worry, I'm still your brother and your friend. Some of you will not like this. But wherever you are now is as a result of what you have sown in the past. Hello, somebody. Because you went to school, that's why they employed you in this job you are doing. If you didn't went to school, (laughs) is somebody hearing me? Everything that you are now, (laughs) I'm having way too much fun with this. Everything that you are now is because of what you have sown in the past, good or bad. That's the word. Therefore, I put it to you as a legal colleague. I put it to you that whatever you are going to be in the future is as a result of what you are sowing now. Therefore, if you want a different outlook to your future, if I want a different outlook to my future, I need to be sowing some kind of seed. Many of us get emotional with God. Then we start using blackmail. We even rope in the pastor. Say, God, I paid my tithe. I visited the pastor two times. Why have you not answered my prayer? As long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time will never cease. You can't change the principle. Forget it. And so, I want us to enjoy our Christianity and enjoy our Christian life. Because the the Bible says that, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. If you are struggling in your Christianity, guess what? You are not operating the Christianity correctly. Oh, somebody missed that. It went over your head. You'll get it next week. If you are struggling in certain areas of your life, check it.
some people came to my house yesterday for choir practice, and I had to repack one of their cars. And I almost ran into my neighbor's gate because it's been years since I drove a manual um, operated car. I was pressing the accelerator. Why is this thing not moving? I forgot that there's a clutch somewhere that you have to press. <laughs> now, if something happens, somebody will wake up and say, this stupid car. Look at this nonsense car. Excuse me, sir. It's not the car. You did not operate the car properly. Like, <laughs> had this happened in real life? One of my... <laughs> One of my senior colleagues said, when they newly got married, <laughs> the wife bashed his car. When he asked his wife, he said, the Tesco wall was too close to my car. <laughs> so the problem was the wall that was too close. <laughs> the, wall came, the wall came towards her. It wasn't her fault, though. The wall was the problem. Why was the whole moving and following her? So if there's something going wrong, check it. Are you operating according to the manual? Not all the time. I mean, sometimes you might be going through a difficult patch because you're going through a difficult patch. But as I'm, pre I'm telling you this, that because see, there are certain things that you will understand that will now give you peace of mind. You will just know that God is in control. Relax. A lot of times the worry the, the anxiety, the angst that we feel is because we don't really get a grip of what's going on. Many people have left coming to church because they thought that ah, God did not answer my prayer when I asked him for, you know, you know 20, 20 pounds the other day and all of that. And so, you know, my mother was sick with cancer and all of that. I put it to you. The Bible says, as for God, I think it's Psalm 30, one of those scriptures. It says, as for God, his ways are perfect. Hallelujah. It's not a problem with God. We need to learn how to understand the principle. So whatever we are, whatever we are living today is as a result of what you have sown in the past. And if we are going to change the future, then we need to sow a different kind of seed. Some of you are looking for six-pack. Hallelujah. You are looking for six-pack. You don't exercise. You don't diet. You know. And then you are looking for six-pack. You will keep looking. <laughs> Let's look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. I've got a lot of things to go through here. In John chapter 12 that we read earlier on, some Greeks came to ask Jesus a pretty routine question. It, it was a simple question. He said, Jesus, we want to see you. It should have been straightforward, right? Yes or no. But don't forget that Jesus has already told his disciples that I am not sent to the Gentiles yet. So the disciples did the right thing and came and asked him, can these people come and see you? Instead, Jesus began to give them a lecture. <laughs> Jesus was a teacher, and he used every opportunity to teach them. In John chapter 12, he began to talk to them about a seed falling to the ground and dying. Now, let me, let me explain this to you. Some of you have already forgotten. John chapter 12, remember we read from verse 20, from 12, you know, John chapter 12 from 20 to 26. Agriculturally speaking, one grain of wheat falling to the ground can produce up to eight heads or more. One grain can produce up to eight heads. Each head contains 40 seeds. So when Jesus was speaking to them, because of their understanding, see, there, there, there was an agricultural society, so they understood straight away. He said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it continues to just be a grain of wheat. But if it falls to the ground, there is a multiplying effect. Hallelujah. Biologically, we are told that the seed initially dies and then comes back to life. And that process of dying or staying dormant can be weeks. It could be months. 
it could be days, it could even be years, until the right environment comes in. And then it suddenly starts to germinate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Speaking from a spiritual perspective, Jesus needed to die so that he could produce more sons of God. Is somebody hearing me? So, spiritually, all of us have the ability to produce more sons of God. Not just the ability, we have the responsibility of producing more sons of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2, or First Timothy 2 2, it says, teach the word of God unto faithful men who will in turn teach others. It is our God-given responsibility to reproduce ourselves. If you are not reaching out to somebody, if you are not talking to somebody about Christ, if you are not being an effective Christian, excuse me, sir, we need to, ch we need to check your, the validity of your Christianity. Because it's not just the people that bear Christiana that are Christians. It's not just the people that carry a big Bible that are Christian or have a car sticker that says, I am washed by the blood. I'm covered by this, all of that. They are not the ones that are Christians. If our life is not bearing fruit, then we need to check it. Because somebody said, somebody said to me, ah, or well, the lady, oh, I'm a, my business has taken off. My business has taken off. I'm very busy. Where am I going to reach anybody to talk to? Anything that you are not doing now is simply because you have not made time for it. I'll say that again in a different way. If you're not doing something now, it's simply because it's not a priority in your life. So don't tell me that I don't have time to go to the gym or I don't have time to do evangelism. Hello, somebody. There is 24 hours in a day. I was watching this guy. Not the best example because he's over the top. I was watching this guy, Dwayne The Rock. Um, I like to watch those kind of guys. They're inspiring me. Pray for me. Me too. I'll, be, I'll get there one day. He wakes up 4 a.m. and starts exercising. In my mind, I was like, who did you offend? You know? <laughs> 4 a.m. and starts exercising. Now, you, you and me, want to compare, you want to compare yourself to him. 4 a.m., you are still drinking pap in your dreams. And then you expect to have a body like his. <laughs> There's something about taking personal responsibility for the issues that affect our lives. And that's what I, part of what I'm going to be saying today. But there's a spiritual aspect of it where we have to be producing fruit. The capacity to produce fruit, the capacity to reproduce is right there on your inside. Let me take you one step further. The Bible calls the word of God, or the Bible calls the, 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 the word seed. Amen? In the parable of the sower, I won't have time to go into it. After he had given the parable, Jesus interpreting it, he said, the sower soweth the word. Listen, friends, and this is why I started off saying at the beginning, that you and I may not fully appreciate the impact of what we do. But all it takes is for you and I to sow the word. God didn't say go and convert all of them. Sow the word. Be an example of somebody that sows the word in the life of people. Plant a seed. That's it. What happens after that seed may not necessarily be your problem. As a matter of fact, Paul, said, Paul planted, Apollos watered. It's God that gives the increase. But what are we doing? We are waiting for the big popular preacher, you know, coming to come and read. Praise the Lord. We are called to be just like him. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Can we read 1 Corinthians 15, 45? Jesus needed to fall to the ground so that he could produce. He could produce. 
There are certain characteristics of a seed, a good seed. There is a multiplying effect when that seed is in the ground. Before we go into 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when that seed is in the ground, to the ordinary eye, it looks as if it's just an ordinary seed. In fact, it may even look as if the seed is dead. There's no activity. There's nothing that can be seen. There are some of us now that in our lives, that it doesn't seem to be anything going on on the surface. But God is working on you underneath. God is dealing with you underneath and preparing you for where he wants to take you to. You know, some people pray some kind of dangerous prayers. And I just laugh because I know God is not going to answer the prayer. If God takes you there, you will kill yourself before your time. There was a brother, God blessed him so much, he stopped going to church. God blessed him so much financially. He was praying. We were there. We were there with him. And then all of a sudden, he's too busy. He's too busy to go to church and worship the same God who blessed him. That's why I said anything that we're not doing now, you simply, you and I, we simply have not prioritized it. Because as I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. There is a wealth of knowledge out there. There is a wealth of things that you can do to improve yourself, to bless humanity. But then we feel that we don't have the time. Time will not permit for me to talk about um, rates, you know, mind, things in your mind that block, that limits us, limitations of the mind. Because sometimes it's just here. Henry Ford said, the man who says I can't do it and the man who says I can't do it, both of them are right. <laughs> Hello, somebody. The man who says I can't do it plus the man who says I can't do it, both of them are right. So sometimes it's up here. And so sometimes you and I, we need to tell ourselves, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Praise the Lord. I want to close with this because the word of God is a seed. The word of God is a seed. Your life is a seed. In 1 Corinthians 15, 45, the Bible says that the first Adam was a living soul. But the second Adam was a life-giving spirit. The second Adam is Jesus. And we are created in the image of Jesus. So, the Bible says in the same way, first in John, I'm going too fast. First John verse 2, it says, as he is, so are we in this world. We are created in the image of the second Adam. So, in the same way that Jesus is a life-giving spirit, guess what? You and I are life-giving spirits. If anybody comes in contact with you, with you life should come out from them. You know, humorously, I was speaking to a brother who said that um, witches and wizards were chasing him in a dream. And I was angry. I was offended. I was genuinely upset. Why are they chasing you? Why are you not chasing them? Why are they always chasing you? It's because you don't know who you are. Have you seen those little dogs? Sometimes when I go on home visits, you hear a dog barking, whoa, 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 and you're thinking, my God, that's a ferocious animal. You get there, you see the tiny little thing. The Bible says the enemy roars around like, like, is he a lion? No, but he roars like a lion. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you, you hear a big noise, when there's a big issue, somebody says they're a witch. <laughs> the Bible says we are far above principality. I was annoyed. Why are they chasing you? What nonsense. You should be the one chasing them. Amen. You should be the one chasing them. In fact, I told him, next time when you dream, stand. Don't run. 
The guy probably thought I was crazy. I said, no, stand there. And tell them that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Tell them that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And let's see what they're going to do. The Bible says my people perish because the devil is bad. Is that what the Bible says? My people perish because the devil is too strong. Is that what the Bible says? My people perish for lack of knowledge. So what you don't know doesn't hurt you. No, what you don't know is killing you. Amen, somebody. There's no time to get into the power of the seed, but I'm going to try and round up with this. We, we, we discussed this truly today. <laughs> Everything God does begins with a seed. Everything that God does, it starts with a seed. Every great thing that God is going to do in your life starts with a seed. I'll, I'll tell you a testimony. I remember when um, the first time we traveled as a family, my wife and I, um, just three or three years into marriage, I think, our boy was not even a year old. And um, we went to the States. We went to see some friends in the United States. Not Lagos State, you know. We went to the States. <laughs> we went to Texas and um, we had booked a hired, a hired vehicle, a rental car, to move around. And as we continued, we got there, they offered us a free upgrade. You know the way they do this, their sales pitch. And as we were driving that car, you need to understand, newly married, I've not been working for too long. I didn't have a lot. In fact, auntie's here. My car, I used to believe God. When I get into that car, I will start speaking in tongues because I don't know if the car is going to carry me to where I'm going. The car did not have heating. So in the winter, we were wearing our coat inside the car. If you climb, if I'm going where there's a hill, I'm praying extra special in the spirit. Because I don't know if I'm going to get over that hill or get to the next destination. And I get to a car rental and they give us an upgrade of some sort. I can't remember what it was. And as we were driving that SUV, I heard very clear in my spirit, your next car is an SUV. This is a guy who cannot afford a normal saloon. I saw it, I heard clearly as I was driving that car. Your next car is an SUV. Everything God does, he plants a seed. God will show you a glimpse. God will give you an idea of where your future is going. It's up to you and I to nurture that seed. To hold on to that dream. To hold on to that vision. And make sure that what he has showed you, you are acting upon it. Is somebody hearing me? God will not reveal everything to you. God will not tell you that, well, um, in, tw in two years' time, you will make so and no money, and then you will buy the car. No, no, no. In fact, God, if God shows you everything sometimes, you will run away. <laughs> you will just run away and say, ah, no. Because with every blessing, sometimes there are temptations, there are things, there are challenges to get there. And so God is kind enough to shield us. But he will show us snippets. He will give you an idea, a glimpse of where he wants to take you to. I said, these seeds have the ability to reproduce themselves. Amen. You know, some of us are very good at also destroying our seed. Some seeds are edible. But if you eat all the seed, there can never be a harvest. You know, when we preach like this, people don't, they, you don't get the big amen because it's not popular. If I say, you're going to be a millionaire, I say, hey, amen. You want to steal it, Abi? <laughs> hey, God is going to bless you. Hey, Amen. I found out something. <laughs> that people who are not Christians, sometimes, they follow the principles of Christ and they prosper. They may not know the person of Christ, but they follow the principles of Christ. And so they prosper. What are the principles? The Bible says, for example, give. 
and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together. No man will ever be successful or wealthy without the seed principle. If you are not a giver, you can never be rich. Take it to the bank, lock it up somewhere. If you don't know how to give, if you don't know how to release things, you will not enjoy true wealth. You see, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord in Proverbs, it maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. My translation says it adds no wahala with it. Amen. So you want to be successful? Understand the seed principle. Every seed has the ability to reproduce themselves. You see, it takes, oh, my time is up. It takes the discernment to know when, what comes into your hands. Is this something that is seed or is this something that is food? I learned this from John Maxwell. Every person that comes into my life, even transiently, every person, even if it's just for a short time, God, why did you send them here? What can I do to bless them? Because there are some people in your circle that I may never meet because they are in your circle. Talk about six degrees of separation. When Jesus healed the, the man who was having a demon in Mark chapter 5, he said, go home to your world, to your own circle of friends, to your own cosmos, and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. There are certain people that you know that I may never meet. And therefore, the onus is on you to be a blessing to them. There is power in the seed. And that divine seed is Jesus. His names are the seed of Abraham or the seed of David. He was with God at the beginning. His name is also called the Word of God. In John chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is the divine seed. Next time, we'll talk about the power of the seed. Let's bow our heads to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just thought to take it slowly this morning and introduce this subject to us. It may not be new. It may not be something you shout about. But I want to lay a foundation. I want to lay a foundation. I don't know where the word has met you this morning. But I feel very much like a messenger with a message. He's our help in time of need. He's an ever-present help in time of need. People operate the principles of Christ without knowing the person of Christ. Today, if you are here and you don't know the person of Christ, I want to encourage you that it's an opportunity to do that. I don't want you to leave this auditorium without having a relationship with Jesus himself. And so, Father, Lord, we thank you this morning for as many as have heard this word. Your word says that so shall this word be that goes forth out of our mouth. It shall not come back to you void. It shall accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray you do that which only you can do. Amplify this word in our hearts. For everyone who may be watching later on online, give them understanding, oh God. Help us, Lord, even all of us who are here, that next week we will not come back in the same way. That we will have grown deeper, we will have grown better in you. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.